Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm Claudia Aguirre. I'm the principal of Sojourner Truth School. Um, Sojourner Truth School, if you're not familiar with it, I'm, I think it mostly serves Harlem community and um, a lot of District 5, District 4. So we do serve students not only from Harlem and all of District 3, but we also take students in from the surrounding districts. And part of the um, reason for that is that we seek to make sure that we are working really, really hard to revitalize the Harlem community and the educational offerings within our community. So I've been at the school for three years. Um, we have done a lot of amazing work to bring wonderful programming, enrichment activities, technology. Um, we've recruited really, really hard and have some amazing teachers. I think we have more Ivy League graduates running around our school than uh, you would expect. Um, in terms of some of the things that you'll hear tonight, you're going to be hearing a lot about all the courses, electives. So I'm just going to focus specifically on things that are unique to our program. And then what I would love to do is, I'm guessing you and your kids already have your top three schools, your top five schools. I'm just going to push you to pick at least one or two schools that you may be having considered. I think you might be surprised by what you find inside. And so one of the reasons I would push for that is one, our school can offer you a place where your child is known really well. Every school leader, every teacher and adult in the building will know your child's name, which is something that can't be said for some of the bigger schools. So that's something that I personally find really important for my own kids. And I love the idea of them being in a school for three years where they're really well known. And when you walk into the building, we will know you by name. So that's one thing. One of the ways we achieve that is that we do have an advisory program. Again, you'll hear that said many times. But we take it to another level. Your kid will meet with their advisor once a week, right? And they will know them not only as an academic student and scholar, but they will get to know them personally, learn about their interests, their learning styles, and then serve as an advocate for them at the school. So anytime as your child is getting ready for high school, college, and beyond, they will be their support system to ensure that they're learning those self-advocacy skills and learning to transition from being in that elementary school setting into a middle school setting that's preparing them for that independence needed for success in high school. Um, other, another unique feature that we have is we do have a one-to-one -one laptop program. And so what that allows us to do is as students come into the school, they receive a laptop for school-wide use. It allows them to personalize their instruction on that platform. And so when we go into um, dedicated math classes for online instruction, they're working at their level. So if your sixth grader is coming in on an eighth grade, ninth grade level, they can get instruction where they're at that will continue to push them forward. If your child is someone who is strong in literacy, but not in math, for instance, they will get that individualized instruction that meets them where they're at in math. Um, language arts, very important to us we've brought a program in called, we call it book clubs. And basically what it is, is again, it allows our students, we have kids who come in in sixth grade and they're reading high school level. They're ready for those kinds of conversations. We have other kids who are at sixth grade level or maybe they're not quite there yet. And so what we're able to do is we're able to provide our students with small group instruction regardless of where they're at that allows them to be fully engaged in high level conversations, push their reading, on average, our students, normally as a child will go up in the middle grades one year. Our students on average accelerate three years of growth in terms of individualized reading instruction by the time they finish their sixth grade year. Um, are you all melting? Because I am. <laughs> um, I'm going to set my timer so I make sure I leave questions. Um, Let's see, we do serve pre-K to eight. So what that allows us to do for our older students is provide a lot of opportunities for them to become mentors and to develop some of those leadership skills with our younger students. Um, they opt in. That was it. Yeah, so we're, that goes really fast. Um, it goes, allows them to take on mentoring and leadership roles and allows them to choose to do some of the work with early childhood. Maybe some of them are thinking about futures in education, maybe some of them just really enjoy spending time with the younger ones. So they have opportunities to do that. Um, and I think I'll close before I let you ask questions, just sharing some of the partnerships. So we have some amazing partnerships. Um, it includes a partnership with ESPN. They've adopted us. They come in once a month and they have um, opted to mentor our honor society and our student government. We have a separate mentorship with Mercer Bank and Morgan Stanley. Each of them has adopted a grade and they come in and they provide mentoring, career. Is that me? Oh, that's them. 
Wow, that's super fast. Do you have any questions before we close? I do have handouts here that cover all the specific details. We do have a website. You can check it out. I hope you have an amazing experience. There's so many amazing schools. I know you'll land well. Visit us if you're interested. It was nice to meet you all. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My, my name is Christina Jelinek, and I'm the principal of Dual Language Middle School. It's such a, such a pleasure to meet with you tonight as you embark on this embark or continue as the, as the case may be for those of you who have been looking at the middle school process. I'm really excited to tell you a little bit about DLMS, Dual Language Middle School, and then hopefully for, to take some time for, for questions of which I'm sure there are many. Dual Language Middle School is a small school located on 77th Street between Amsterdam and Columbus. We share a building with Anderson and the Computer School. We have 220 students and our belief is that students learn best in a bilingual and bicultural environment. So our students are engaged in English and Spanish learning on a daily basis through social studies and Spanish native language arts in Spanish and their other core content areas in English. And we really believe in the research that indicates that students who learn to read, write, and think in two languages can be more successful, not just in middle school, high school, and cert but certainly beyond because their brains learn to do executive functioning and engage in different, in different ways and really think, think differently as they prepare to be successful. And so we really enjoy the opportunity to support students, many of whom come from Spanish-speaking homes, others of who come, ho come from English-speaking homes and even students who are speaking a third or, or fourth language at home and want to add Spanish as in an academic sense to, to their repertoire. We also believe that the social-emotional needs of our students is very important and particularly thinking about the transition from elementary school to middle school and how that prepares students for beyond. And so we have a strong advisory program where students are coupled in small groups with, with an advisor who meets with them weekly to share, to monitor progress through me weekly progress progress reports to discuss issues in the news and to help with the transit starting in sixth grade to help with the transition to middle school and then transitioning through seventh and eighth grade to prepare our students to apply to and be accepted into the best high schools possible for each individual child. We certainly believe that the academic piece of, of our instructional program is important, as are the partnerships and after-school programs that teachers offer, because we think that students do best when they have a wonderful experience, not just during the traditional school day, but after school as well. And so our teachers offer activities like step team, dance team, STEM, STEM club, astronomy, and a variety of other ac activities, in addition to partnership programs with MBA CARES, Salesforce and other organizations to really help students get exposed not just to important learning, learning and topics, topics at hand, but also what life is like once they get out of school and enter the real world with mentorship experiences through from employees from those organizations. I could say more, but I hope there are some questions, so I'd be happy to happy to answer those. Yes. Um, in dual language elementary school, there's no uh, like Spanish grammar instruction, et cetera. Is that does that continue in middle school, or is there more attention to the learning the learning the construction of the language as opposed to immersion? Yeah, that's a great question. There is instruction in the grammatical pieces because we believe that students, we believe that students should learn to read and write in both languages and so we begin to support students to, to draft essays through, in, in both languages. And yes. like grammar, like conjugation? Yeah. Yes, it's it's not quite like the old school conjugation that I learned when I pre when I when I memorize when I memorize the charts, but there is support and language and instruction in in some of the more traditional grammar because we find that that's something that benefits students both who come from a Spanish language home, but also students who come from an English dominant or other other homes. I know I learned so much more about English grammar when I studied Spanish, and we find that the opposite the opposite goes, and so we we really use language as a way to to reinforce and deepen deepen skills. Do you need a background in Spanish, or can kids come in without really speaking? Many, many students come in with at least some exposure to the language, but a student who's highly motivated and, and interested and willing to do the work can be successful in our school. As a sixth grader, they'll take two classes in Spanish. One is Spanish native, native arts, similar to sort of a Spanish class that we may have taken starting in middle school and high school, and our teachers differentiate those just like they differentiate an ELA class. So if a student comes comes in with a strong foundation in Spanish and is ready to read more challenging texts, then they would get those texts. If a student who is newer to the language needs more limited and earlier resources, that's those are what we provide, just like a student who's new new to English would receive English language support in, in a class where they are new to new to the country. Yes. How do you work with um, students in terms of selecting them for the advanced or accelerated coursework? Yes. 
Absolutely. So in sixth and seventh grade, all students are engaged, all students take the same courses with differentiated classes for reading, math, computer science, and one strand throughout the day. And we make those judgments based on a number of assessments that we use, including the DRP, state test scores, and other scores that come in. When students are in eighth grade, all students take the Spanish language regions. Everyone's prepared to take that. And a select group of students takes the Algebra One regions, and everyone will be taking either living environment or another science region. It's been a slow, a slow grade as our students and teachers are getting ready to offer those, those classes. Thank you so much. Best of luck. You have a big decision ahead. Good luck with all the information that you're receiving tonight. And please come and visit us down on 77th Street. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Lynch Garrity, otherwise known as Miss Lynch at Booker T. I'm at Booker T at MS54. Um, I was a math teacher at Booker T for many years before becoming assistant principal. Uh, our principal, Dr. Elster, who unfortunately couldn't be here this evening, was also a teacher at Booker T for many years before becoming principal. I open with that for the reason of kind of highlighting that Booker T is a very special place. People don't tend to want to leave. Um, students also don't want to leave. Of course they do. They go to high school, college, careers, many wonderful things, and they come back and visit and tell us about that. We have an art teacher who's been there since 1965. He ran into an old student on the street recently, said, what's up, what's going on? The old student said that he had just retired. So that kind of informed the art teacher, OK, maybe, maybe it's time, or maybe I'll just keep going. Um, so that was kind of a cute story. But it really highlights the special place that Booker T is. We're inclusive, we're helpful, and that really has to do with the relationships that are there among staff to staff, student to student, and adult to student alike. Um, when students do come back and visit, they talk about things which are always very fascinating to me, like writing their freshman year of college, uh, doing writing for courses in that freshman year. Um, how it's come naturally to them. They may have a roommate who's really struggling and they're kind of perplexed or flabbergasted. How is this such an issue for you? I learned how to do this and master this at Booker T. They don't even refer to high school. They come back and kind of refer to us. That really highlights the skills that we focus on. Um, these skills are possibly thought of as more traditional based. We want to make sure that students are learning great study habits, learning to be students, learning to be scholars. Uh, we are a large school. In that traditional sense, we have uh, over 900 students. We have a large building, uh, just us in that one building. Very lucky in the city to have that. However, we do have smaller communities, homerooms, that make up the building. And in sixth grade, especially during that transition from elementary school, students are made more to feel more comfortable in that transition by traveling around in those smaller communities, which are the homerooms. And then seventh grade, they might branch off for some elect uh, electives and languages. Eighth grade, branching off even more in some of their content area uh, based on level. Some people taking high school courses. But again, um, we were really focusing on strong student skills, especially um, our philosophy in the sixth grade for students to really master time management, organization, um, study skills. Students have planners. They record their assignments in there. We give them an orientation on how to do this. We have a buddy system for them. We don't post homework online, although, of course, we're in communication with parents and are responding to your needs constantly in terms of helping you with your students um, and navigating this homework field. Seventh graders are really using these skills in kind of deeply analyzing, thinking more critically, writing two research papers on the seventh grade year. And then eighth grade, really focusing on more independence and the transition that eighth graders go through as they are going into high school, where, of course, we want to have and see more self-sufficiency. Our principal, Dr. Elster, often refers to the fact that students will come around to see American history again and some of these content areas again. But what we really want to strengthen and focus on are these basic study skills, um, analytical skill skills, reading and writing, that are going to help in these curricula that do repeat themselves for the most part again, um, building strong students that way. Um, there's about two, home, two hours of homework a night. So I don't know what rumors you've heard or what are circulating this year. Um, and uh, questions, questions about Booker T. We definitely want you to come to the tours, sign up. If you get locked out, hopefully you don't because there are so many of them. But inevitably, some people do get locked out. There are two open houses. I think we've upped it since one in the past. Open houses, anyone can come to. You don't need to register. That stuff doesn't count in the admissions process. You don't have to attend any of that. That doesn't get recorded. Um, think about your questions before you come then. But anyone have questions right now? Yes. Is Booker T still the Delta program? 
No, we don't use, I mean, people refer to it as that, but that was more when we had programs within the building. It's always been one school. There's some misnomers about that. It's always been one school, but we used to have separate programs in the building, and that's no longer after the last handful of years. Different level classes have also existed, but at this point, it's pretty much, we are accelerating everyone um, and then differentiating on a class level. We're also in the eighth grade, then breaking out into some advanced year classes when kids take high school classes in eighth grade. Yeah, and I think I have to transition, but did you have a question as I'm packing up? Yes, yes. Sure, the Booker T exam is made up of ELA math uh, questions and also a short writing piece. Similar type uh, to the state test, there's no prep that you need to do. Um, you might see people offering prep classes on the Booker T test. That's not real or true that we're aware of. Um, we don't uh, sponsor anything like that. Really, we say the best thing is a good night's sleep and a good breakfast, and they're really just using their skills um, that they've developed over the elementary school years on that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the, let me again welcome you to the Middle School Forum, and secondly, uh, I'd like to share a little bit about uh, PSIS 76, uh, the eighth of Philip Randolph School of the Humanities. Uh, my name is Charles DeBerry. I'm the principal uh, at this uh, IS 76 for the past uh, 15 years. This is year 16. Uh, our middle school sort of developed out of uh, the idea of wanting to provide our students who were in our K-5 program with a place where they could stay and uh, continue to grow as we prepare them for high school. So we are now K-8, to and uh, our middle school students occupy the third floor of our building, and uh, there they go to their classes, and they don't mix very much with our uh, elementary students. They do go to the first floor for lunch, but uh, apart from that, uh, they are not a part of the K-5 to uh, program or the physical part of the building that they occupy. Uh, a little bit about our curriculum. Uh, we're using for ELA uh, the uh, Codex, um, and we also sort of supplement that with uh, Engage New York, where we are looking at the standards that children need uh, what they need to meet and then providing uh, material and uh, practice and, uh, and opportunities for them to develop their skills. Uh, for the writing portion of literacy, we're using the Teachers College uh, writing program and um, so we supplement the Codex program with that. For social studies, of course, we, we uh, are using Passport, uh, the, the Department of <coughs> Education sort of uh, moved to uh, a couple of years ago, and we're currently using the FOSS modules for our science. Uh, two years ago, we built a, uh, three years ago, we uh, opened our new science lab, uh, where our middle school students have an opportunity to do more hands-on lab work, uh, dissecting uh, animals, uh, investigating uh, various uh, eighth grade science modules, and, uh, and curriculum and content. Uh, we have a host of um, uh, after school activities. We collaborate with the Harlem Children's Zone. Our students are, have an opportunity to be engaged in, uh, in pro programming in the arts and academic uh, from 2.40 until 6 o'clock uh, on a, a weekly basis. So that's Monday through Friday, 2.40 till 6 o'clock. Uh, during that time, they're engaged in some homework help uh, we do some tutoring during that time. Uh, we also have um, opportunities for arts. Uh, they visit the YMCA on 142nd Street where they participate in gymnastics and several other activities. We collaborate with the uh, Harlem Lacrosse and Leadership. We have a lacrosse team in our school. They're very competitive and have done quite well since uh, they joined us four years ago. We currently have four students who are attending private boarding schools in Connecticut, North Carolina, Virginia, Massachusetts, and Pennsylvania. Uh, those students are there on full scholarships playing uh, lacrosse. Uh, the hope is that they will 
get full scholarships to go into college and continue uh, their career. It has opened doors for them that perhaps would not have done so without the opportunity to play lacrosse. We also have a football team in our school. Uh, we have a coach that is a partner with the Giants and Jets uh, youth football. And uh, last year they did win the championship in the league that they was in. This year they're competing and uh, we hope that we can repeat that. Uh, as far as for some of the uh, language, we're using uh, interactive Mulberry language program uh, so that children can learn to speak other languages. It gives us an opportunity to do it using technology. And so we have an online teacher, but we also have teachers from our community that are assisting with that. Uh, at this point, I'll stop and take any questions that you might have. The music will start very soon. Any questions? Yes. How many students? Okay, we have approximately 180. It, it, it fluctu fluctuates from uh, 160 to about 180. That concludes session four. Session five will begin. Any other questions? At 7.01. Yes. And at 7.06. Yes, uh, so we do go to like the YMCA to do the gymnastics, but uh, most of the activities take place on the campus. Thank you very much for your attention. How you doing? Uh, my name is Brian Zager. I'm the principal of Lafayette Academy. You guys are in the room without air conditioning. That's awesome. Um, so uh, my school is on uh, one, it's 154 West 93rd Street. It's on 93rd between Columbus and Amsterdam. That bell's going to ring in like three seconds, so I hope you don't mind if I talk quickly. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about my school. Uh, I've got 170 kids, which is awesome. I love having a small school. I wouldn't want it to grow even if I had the choice to. Um, I know all of my children, I know all the parents, the little brothers, the little sisters, it's a, it's, uh, it's a very big family oriented school, it's a very much of an um, open door policy. Um, I know everybody in here is dying for the test scores to come out, nobody is dying for the test scores to come out more than I am. Um, while I cannot say anything, especially with the camera on me right now, um, I am uh, imploring you guys to look up when you have a chance. Uh, New York State website, NYSED, um, N-Y-S-E-D, um, in like a week, the test scores will be coming out. Um, some of the books that you guys may or may not have, the middle school directory books, is actually information from 2016 and 2017. Not 2017, 2018, right now we're in 18, 19, and when your children are coming to school, it's probably gonna be 19, 20. Um, so everything, all the information is pretty much gonna be a little bit older. What I implore you to do, because I have been pretty much um, doubling my test scores on a, on a yearly basis uh, this year, I can't say anything, but again, please go to the website. But what I can tell you is this. Uh, I have had students that have gotten into Brooklyn Tech, LaGuardia, Stuyvesant. Uh, four or five kids got into Beacon last year. I wouldn't lie in front of the camera. Um, I had uh, New York City High School, the Museum School, all the best high schools that you have that, that are possible to come in uh, to go to. I've had students that have come to these, these high schools. So that tells you a little bit about where my school is going and has been growing. Um, there's two different things when you go, to, and I also implore you to go to the New York City, uh, New York, uh, schools.nyc.gov. When you go there, you can look up my school. Two pieces of information, what two reports or statistics. Number one, the learning environment survey, very important. Um, a lot of the parents took the learning environment survey, 93% positive approval. The kids, I have 100% pretty much of my children that took the survey. They'll tell you it's safe, there's no bullying, there's no physical altercations, the teachers love the kids. Uh, my teachers, who would definitely wrap me out if they had the chance to, love every, uh, all aspects of the school, so it's a great. So you'll see that overall, uh, I have one actually in the district, the highest um, learning environment score surveys. The other portion is when it actually looks at the progress report. So there's two things when you have the progress report, and that's what I implore you to do for all schools. The first thing is performance. That's whoever got number three, level threes and fours. The second thing is progress. Our kids be, our kids better for having come to your school. So that means I have kids that come in at level ones, twos, threes, and fours. And now knowing I also got kids in some of these great schools, my teachers have to have been able to grow these kids. So if I have kids coming in threes and fours and they got lower grades, they wouldn't be getting into some of these great schools. So what it shows is there's one, two, three, or four bars. My school got four out of four bars for excellent growth, um, which means whether you're coming in at a 1.2, you're growing to a 1.7 or 1.8. If you're coming in at a 3.5, you're growing to a 3.7 or 3.8. So one of the most things I'm proud of is that no matter where you're coming into my school, you're growing and making growth. Um, we did have kids take the algebra regions, about 75 or 80% of them passed. We did have kids, we are taking, have, taking the learning environment living environment, um, and uh, it's got a great pass rate also. The reason why I changed the name of the school two or three, two years ago, this is my second year now, is Lafayette Academy, um, was because I also have a French dual language program, which is amazing. Um, it, many of my kids come from PS84, but some from other schools as well. I have kids that literally read, write, and speak fluently in French. In French. 
Um, I don't speak a lick of French. Um, I'm learning. Uh, but they definitely know how to write five paragraph essays in French. Uh, it's not a segregated program. These kids are, are mixed um, and integrated together. Um, so there's a lot of uh, beautiful diversity. We have kids from France and, and, and Canada and Mali and Senegal. So it's a beautiful mix of children. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, we have uh, hour long blocks and 90 minute blocks. So we only have seven periods a day. So we don't usually have eight periods. A lot of the schools have eight periods, 45 minute blocks. Um, I think sometimes when you get into a classroom and you take your stuff off, it's really only 40 minutes of good instruction. If you're a good teacher, if you're not so good, it's usually 35 minutes of good instruction. Um, but uh, we have hour-long blocks, and I think that has led a lot to our growth and our progress. Um, what that does leave out is some of the uh, electives, because you're only having seven periods in a day. So what we do is have an elective week. Don't scare me. Is that the bill? All right. Um, what we do is have an uh, elective week. Every other week, our teachers are teaching electives, things that they either have done in previous professions or things that they are passionate about. We have chess, we have architecture, um, we have computer science, we have political science. Uh, they're all great clubs. We have all of the modern technology. We have all brand new smart boards, touch screen, so it's not so much the, uh, not that this isn't a beautiful smart board. Um, we have a one-to-one -one student, -to -t student to laptop ratio, um, which is an amazing aspect of it also. I feel like I'm forgetting a few different things. Um, we do have the arts, of course. Um, we have uh, a beautiful music program and choir. We have a visual arts. We have theater. Uh, we also have sports. There's football. Um, because of the, uh, there's a big love for soccer right now, so or football, depending on what country you're coming from. Um, so we have a, a great soccer program as well. Um, we have volleyball, track and field, which is also um, one of our one of our great programs. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, we talked about. The t I feel like I should know everything right around now. Um, we do it. I was waiting for it. I knew I'm like, usually I'm the bell ringer by now. Session five. I got one more question. So yes. How many students? Session 170. Six will begin at 170. Now, the best thing is, and again, I, I got to get dewired anyways. So the best thing is, is that um, we only really have two sections of sixth grade, but what we do is we break them into three groups because um, we have two sections of seventh graders. So my teachers would rather have actually less preps and have more classes. So we actually have three sixth grade sections, but we only take two sixth grade sections kind of work for kids. Um, so that our set class size in sixth grade are about 17, 18, because there's a massive transition that comes when we want to have our kids prepared. That wasn't on the mic, though. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, stay cool. Hi, uh, my name is Jessica. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. have asked if we're a shared campus. We're not. We're our own space. Um, we are a 6 to 12 school. Parents and students love to hear that because you don't have to do this again. <laughs> Once your child comes in, they can stay until 12th grade, and they are staying. Um, our current ninth grade was our founding group of students when they were in sixth grade, and 95% of them stayed for high school. Um, and they were able to give me really great feedback about what they wanted the high school to look like. And we can build it around kids, which is really cool. Um, something that folks come away with when I talk to them around what makes our school unique is this idea that we are an expeditionary learning school. To break that down for you, um, that means that our subjects are truly interdisciplinary. So for example, our Current sixth graders are studying the health of the Hudson River and working with local scientists and local college professors who are doing similar work. Um, they're studying oysters in the Hudson River and how they filtrate water. So they're doing all of this in science. And then come ELA, that's where we do a lot of our writing and reading associated with that particular topic. And so in this case, it would be not that whole idea around studying nonfiction, reading and writing, which is not something that our kids are super excited about, right? Our go-tos for a lot of our kids are fiction, um, so that's a shift. And then all of our sixth graders in New York City and New York State study um, ancient civilizations in sixth grade. And so that's the perfect tie-in because we study folks' reliance on river valleys and what that meant for civilizations. What you'll hear when you come to our school, we hope you do, um, from kids is exactly what I said and a lot better um, because they can truly articulate their learning and um, they can own it because it's real life stuff. Um, by the time your kids are in eighth grade, they will have had the opportunity to take three high school courses, a US history, 
or um, living environment and algebra one. While all kids will have the option to take that, um, it is not forced. Um, they, so they take, so let me correct myself, they take the course, but taking that exam that would earn them high school credit in June is all up to them. So they have exposure to it and they can say, hey, I'm ready, or I think I wanna have another go at this when I'm in high school, and that's all okay. The beauty of that is that it gave, it gave everybody equal exposure to really rigorous curriculum because it's high school stuff that they're doing in eighth grade. Um, and finally, something that we've become really known for is a comprehensive after school program that our kids are, can participate in, and that goes to six o'clock at night, um, Monday through Friday. There um, are really great sports program. Our kids are getting really good and competitive, which is awesome to see. And uh, our schools also become really well known for our debate program and a theater program. Um, something that I didn't mention in the other room, but I'll definitely mention when um, at Open House and it's all over our website, is the fact that your child is going to be in a crew um, for the time that they are in our school. And that's, that's their advisory period. It is uh, the student, um, 15, stu 15 to 16 students with an ad adult advisor where they do all sorts of like team building stuff. And right now they're going camping. Um, they go camping at the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. And that's where they become this idea that we call crew. Um, and that's something that our kids are really excited to talk about when they talk about middle school. So I'm gonna leave, I'm trying to get better at this in each room I go to. So I'm gonna leave the rest of the time up for questions and hope that you do come and see us. I just wanna stress that um, if you see an open house online that might have closed or you don't have access to it, you can just call the school, the number's there if you wanna register for one. If anything's closed, we'll open up new ones, new open houses for folks to come in and see. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so questions, yeah. that um, you were hoping to have a more diverse set of students and that formation, is that changing over time and how are you pursuing that? Yeah, so it has changed over time, which we're excited about. Um, the fact that we're in year four and we continue to diversify is, is the goal. People know about our school now. Um, it's hard to know about a school when you first open, right? When you first, what's that school? Is that, you know, what, what's going on? Where is it? It's, you know, it's all the way in the southernmost part of the district. There's lots of that stuff that happens your first year with folks just not knowing about it. Um, we're actually gonna be going out to some of the um, northern district schools to make sure that we get to all parents that want to see and hear about our school community. And um, we're committed to it. Yeah. Yes. Oh no, I'm cheating, yeah. So it's about 100. Sometimes it's 115, but the goal is that it's a, it's 100. Um, so it's 700 kids once we're at full capacity. Uh, four, yeah. So it's 25 kids, but sometimes if we're at 110 in that grade, it could be 26, 27. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Lauren Kevel. Um, I'm the principal at the Riverside School for Makers and Artists, PSIS 191. Um, I'm just gonna get right into it because we don't have all that much time. Um, so this is my fifth year as principal. Um, I'm really excited about the growth and change that has occurred at my school over the last four years, and I want to encourage you to come see us and visit us um, because people are always blown away. So I'm going to start by telling you when to come see us in case I get cut off by the announcement so you know where to come and when to come. So we are a pre-K through eight, um, so we offer tours all year. We never stop touring. So we have tours every Wednesday morning at 8.45. Um, we also are doing two open houses, so we have uh, one on October 18th, which is at 6 p.m., and another one on November 11th at 6 p.m. So I encourage you to, to, I think touring is like your best bet because you get to see the school in action with students in the building. Um, we are a teacher's college school, which means that we work very closely with Col Columbia University Teachers College Reading and Writing Project. Um, our teachers do a lot of professional development there. We have consultants that come and work with us to really enhance our curriculum and our programming. Um, so within ELA, our, teacher, our students get reading and writing um, through the Teachers College program. We also uh, work with the Passports Social Studies curriculum and do a lot of project-based learning within social studies and also build that into ELA um, so that the students are walking out really prepared for high school, college, and beyond. Um, we are a connected math school and we also supplement our math program with, with um, Engage New York. 
So what that means is that we really focus on teaching our students problem solving skills and really building conceptual understanding of mathematics. And they're doing a lot of collaboration in their math classrooms to really help prepare them um, for more complex problems that come down the road in high school, college, and beyond. Um, last year, we rolled out uh, Living Environment Regents courses for all of our eighth graders. And this year, we're doing Living Environment Regents and um, Algebra Regents. So all of our eighth graders take two Regents courses um, and have the opportunity to take the Regents exam um, in June. So they're walking out of middle school really prepared for high school um, and oftentimes with high school credits. So we're really excited about that. Um, and proud of that. We um, offer Spanish as our foreign language in middle school, and then we're also building a Mandarin program. So it started in our elementary school, and we're growing it year by year. Um, in terms of our arts series, so our, teach, our students take strings in sixth grade, performing arts in seventh grade, and chorus in eighth grade. So they get a well-rounded um, education. We have an amazing art studio, so they have an opportunity to take art. Um, we have a comprehensive after school program that's really amazing um, it, that goes till 6 p.m. and it's free of charge um, where we offer athletics, uh, the arts, uh, all different sorts of programs um, to really meet the needs of our students. Um, you know, obviously rigorous academics is really important, but also educating the child as a whole is also really critical to, to middle school success. And so we do a lot of work. Um, around social emotional learning. So we are a responsive classroom school. Um, and I encourage you to do a little research on responsive classroom. It's a wonderful way to engage kids in learning um, and to help them learn about themselves as learners and members of a, a larger community. So all of our middle schoolers start the day in an advisory program. Um, it's a small group of about 12 to 15 students. They have an advisor that they meet with every day um, to really help them with managing middle school because it's a big shift from elementary to middle. Um, they go from having one core teacher to having multiple teachers. Um, there's a lot of time management that goes into it. Goal setting, so we do a lot of work with our students around that. Um, we are the Riverside School for Makers and Artists. Um, and actually, our focus on the maker movement really came through our students. So about three years ago, four years ago, our students came to us and said, we really, like, can we have a maker class? We're really interested in this. A small group of students showed interest in make, the maker movement. So we started an after school program and then we built it out from there and now it's a school wide initiative. Um, and so uh, our, our students engage in this work which maker is uh, really STEAM, uh, science, technology, engineering and math um, and STEM. So um, we engage students in critical thinking and uh, problem solving and really important work that helps continue to prepare them for um, their future and they really enjoy it. So they do things like coding, um, all, I think at this point, most of our middle schoolers know how to code. Um, they do a lot of collaboration uh, and create different projects together. Um, one of our maker classes two years ago created a backpack alarm because one of the students said that they kept dropping books out of their backpack. So then they designed a backpack alarm. Um, so they have to do all the research and writing and preparation. Um, it's, it's a really fun and interesting initiative that continues to grow within our school community. Um, do you have questions? I want to stop and make sure that I have time to answer questions. Yes. I heard that the elementary school has a waiting list now, but how many kids, like how many spots do you have available? I guess for sixth graders. Like yeah. So, so every year, more and more of our fifth graders are staying for middle school. So this past year, all but two students stayed for all of our fifth graders moved up into our middle school. So our seats are are decreasing, but we have about thirty seats. Um, so we still do have like about half of our sixth grader new students coming in. But we're very excited that all of our fifth graders want to stay. So I think that also speaks to the growth and change that's happening in our community. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So uh, the Teachers College Writing Program um, is. It's really, I can't tell you the growth that we've seen in student writing since adopting this program. We actually started rolling it out uh, my second year, um, so, th so three, four years ago, and we've just seen tremendous growth year after year. So the focus of TC writing is just a lot of writing, right? Because students get into college and they have to write all the time. And so we're trying to get them in, in, in elementary school and middle school to write, 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 and write, and then write some more. So um, it's really the workshop model where the teacher teaches a specific writing skill, and then the students are just constantly writing essays. Um, they do uh, narrative essays, informational essays, argumentative essays um, all throughout the year. So there's a lot of writing across, across the school building. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so I mean, in terms of like later in life, I think that when our students come back to see us, we have a lot of students who come back to see us, um, they come with a wide variety of, you know, we, we just had a former student come back and gra they, she just graduated from NYU and is a social worker and wants to come back and intern at our school. We have some students that go on to specialized science high schools. We have some students that go on to specialized performing high schools. Um, so it, it really, it, it varies. So we have opportunities for all kids. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Novella Bailey, and I'm the principal of Westside Collaborative Middle School. I am page 20 in your booklet. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm page 20. Um, and Westside has been a Westside Collaborative. We're right on 96th Street um, and West End Avenue. We're in the PS75 building. We've been around for over 20 years, so we've been around probably about 25, 26 years. Um, I've been at this school for 18 years. I started as a first year you know, teacher at Westside Collaborative as a, a sixth grade humanities um, and arts teacher, and I just never left the building. Um, and I think one of some of the reasons why is what I'll kind of speak to tonight. And you ha have all the details in the pamphlet, so I don't want to like you know just rattle off that. I'm going to speak to kind of like the heart of the school, um, and then maybe there'll be time for some questions. So the first thing I would say is that the Westside Collaborative is designed with adolescents in mind. Um, the founding principal really understood adolescence and th this unique phase of life where students are beginning to think, well, who am I? What am I passionate about? What do I care about? What are my strengths? How do I communicate with others? There are all these pieces that are kind of floating around. Um, in addition, they want to be able to make choices about their learning. Um, they want to be able to think about what's right, what's fair, and have opportunities to really explore those big, you know, real world issues. So um, in our curriculum, we think about that. And then we also recognize that middle schoolers they're getting ready for high school, and they want that independence, but they need a lot of structure and support in order to be successful. Um, so our programming reflects those pieces. Um, Westside Collaborative is the place where your child is known. Um, the teachers work very diligently to create a positive community and a, a true climate of care. We spend a lot of time in the beginning of the year, um, and I guess what you could say in orientation, we call it I Connect Week. So the students in the, you know, the new sixth graders, they get to learn about one another. They're engaging in community building activities. They're getting to know the staff, right, so that there's a sense of safety and security when they're in that space. They spend a lot of time on it because we know it's incredibly important for fifth graders that are moving into a new space to feel like now, like, this is, this is going to be my home and people know who I am and there are places where I can go if I need support. Um, so that we spend a lot of time on that. In addition, we have what is called an academic coaching program. We call it base camp. You know, we, we use the metaphor of like kind of traveling through your, your learning at West Side is like you're climbing a mountain and you need a place to go where you can plan. You need a place to go where you can map out what you're going to do. You need a space where you can collaborate and cheer each other on. So base camp is that space for our kids. They're in groups of 10 to 12, one time a week. And in those base camp classes, that's where students learn how to unpack um, teacher feedback because once we hit middle school teachers are there's tons of I mean if they're rubrics in elementary it gets worse than you know all the rubrics and the circles and the underlining and it's like for a 11 year old what does this mean what do I need to do what are my what are my real strengths so we help students understand that and then set academic goals and then from there begin to practice whatever skills they need to practice um, to move towards mastery so they spend a lot of time of that on that and in addition, in base camps, um, the students are preparing what we call student-led conferences. I know many um, elementary schools do student-led conferences, and Westside Collaborative was one of the first um, schools in the district to do student-led conferences. So the students are then preparing a presentation for their families that really outlines, this is where I am, these are the grades I've received, here's the evidence um, in my work of where I'm doing really well and where I need to grow, and these are my goals for the next trimester. It's something that we feel is incredibly important so that when our students move on to high school, they know how to advocate for, advocate for themselves. They know how to say, hey, this is what I'm really good at. I need to be challenged, or here's where I'm gonna need support and I need a, a friend, or I need a teacher, or I, you know, I need that extra thing to help me um, you know, learn more and, and have, a, have a more valuable learning experience. In addition, we also have a class that's called Personalized Learning Module. So this is another space where our students get some individualized attention. In addition to the core curriculum that's in the booklet, our students also um, have four periods a week where they are grouped based on assessment data. So we look at their reading, we look at their writing, we look at their mathematics, and then they're grouped with other students that have particular needs or strengths similar to them for those blocks. So for example, this year we have 
a, a sixth grader who's reading really at a 10th grade level. So for his reading block, he's going to be with other students. They might be some seventh graders, they might be some eighth graders that are reading where he's reading. And that could benefit from looking at a really challenging but appropriate text, right, to do some of those close reading strategies that they're going to need to do in high school. There may be another student that needs to practice um, an aspect of ratio and proportion or fractions because that is the standard that's going to help them get access, right, um, to, to the learning that happens when you're moving at an eighth grade level. I don't want to stop. You guys are a really great group. But so just so you know, at our school, your child's going to get that they will receive individualized attention. They have a staff that cares so much about community. Your child will be known. Um, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. This is my closing line. I'm going to ask you to think about um, coming to check us out and try us out. It's like shoes. You may think that a shoe in the window, uh, like I love Harry's. Uh, Harry's, like that's the shoe. I want it, you get in, you get there, and then the thing is too narrow, it's too wide, your heel's slipping out, and it's like, you know, wait, wait, that's not my shoe. But guess what? Westside Collaborative could be your shoe. So come, <laughs> visit us, try us out, come to a tour so you can see the children. I think that that makes a big difference, and you see how the teachers interact with the children. I wish you guys um, a fantastic rest of your evening, and you have really great schools to choose from. Welcome, my name is Tanika Parker. I'm the principal of PSAS 180, where you're at right now, so welcome home. In case you're following along in your booklet, it's page 10, all right? So we are a pre-K through eight school. We are not co-located, we are our, um, a community school, and this is a place where um, our students, they have grown up from pre-K, all the way through eighth grade, but we still welcome so many new families as well into our middle school. So definitely consider us. For middle school, it's on the fourth floor of the building, and it's a small middle school. We have two sections on each grade. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about what makes us unique. So across all of our grades, we personalize learning. That's something um, that is really important to us here. And what personalized learning looks like, we make sure that every single child is getting what he or she needs in order to be successful. That's at the heart of what we do at 180. So what students experience on a typical school day, they have a double block period of literacy. There's an elective. They also have a double block period of math. Students go to lunch. And then in the afternoon, that's where personalized learning really comes to life. So for core instruction in the mornings, the average class size is about 25 students. But in the afternoons, through flexible programming, we actually cut that class size in half, and we only have about 10 to 15 students in any given middle school class in the afternoons. So your child is getting a ton of small group and one-on-one -on -one attention. That's what makes us unique. We offer both the algebra regions as well as the living environment regions here. Just like our namesake, we are preparing students for college, Hugo Newman College Preparatory. In terms of electives, so in sixth grade, we have a wonderful hydroponics lab. Our sixth graders, they take health and nutrition class. Um, they have an opportunity to grow a variety of vegetables and herbs, um, bok choy, lettuce. They love it, right? But when they get into seventh and eighth grade, we want it to feel a little bit more like high school. We want them to be able to decide what they would like as their electives. So we have student choice electives, and we have a variety of those electives on our menu of options. One of them is forensics. Maybe your child loves watching CSI. They should sign up for forensics, right? Um, we also have studio and set design, and we have a partnership with City Year. And so our students are learning how to build props and costumes, and we have a small class size for that to be able to happen as well. We also have TV, media, and journalism. Perhaps they're tech savvy. This would be the course for them. We also have, in the fall, speech and debate class. By the way, 180 always wins. And we also have, in the spring, mock trial. Going back to what it looks like in the afternoons, in case you want to follow along. This is our little cheat sheet. OK. So we focus on the whole child here. So personalized learning happens both social emotionally as well as academically. Crew advisory. This is a partnership that we have with New York City Outward Bound. Our students, again, in that small size of 10 to 15 students, 
They have the same crew advisor and the same crew members across all three years. I lead a crew, my AP leads a crew. It is all about building community, building relationships. Crew is all about that family environment. We want every single child to be known very well by an adult in this building. And so that's what crew is about, building that family. For rigorous instruction, we have blended learning. And this happens within mathematics. So in middle school, all of our middle school students, they have access to their own Chromebook. We have one-to-one -one technology. We also have Promethean smart boards up there. And for mathematics, if a child is perhaps struggling in a given area, a standard with that small class size and with the adaptive technology like Khan Academy iReady, every child, it is not one size fits all. There's not a one size fits all curriculum for blended learning. It's what every single child needs in order to be successful. So you have one to two teachers in that room really working with students on an area that they need further support in. Maybe your child is doing quite well in mathematics and they need access to seventh grade standards. Within the blended learning course, we're able to do that because it is adaptive and it isn't one size fits all. We really want to make sure that every child is getting what he or she needs to be successful. I'm going to keep going. We have book clubs. We are a teacher's college reading and writing project school. We prioritize the love of literacy in all of our classrooms and we really make sure that we're having um, children engage in rich conversations um, with literacy. And we have Genius Hour. Genius Hour is our passion project course. So all of our middle schoolers take Genius Hour. And this is where students, they're able, to, it's self-directed with a Genius Hour advisor. And they are taking, um, um, it's, it's a research course, but it's also very much a social justice course. What they are passionate about and what change they want to make in the world. We focus on research and inquiry as the key skills. The course concludes with our students presenting their ideas in a roundtable format to faculty, to community members, as well as to parents. This is preparing them for college and career readiness. That is what we are all about here. I hope that you choose us. Please come visit us on a tour. It was great speaking with you all. My name is Andrew Sullivan. I'm the principal of the Community Action School. We're located on West 93rd Street between Columbus and Amsterdam Avenues. We are in the Joan of Arc building, which is the building that the superintendent is in, if you're um, familiar with that building. Um, we share with Manhattan School for Children and Lafayette Academy. I have been at CAS for 17 years, started off as a teacher, moved on as an assistant principal, and I'm the principal now. Jill Sinnott is my assistant principal, and she's handing out some flyers. Our school has approximately 250 students three academic groups on every grade level, six, seven, and eight. We also offer an ACES program. It's a very small special ed self-contained class of eight students who are cognitively impaired and do not take um, New York State assessments. So I'll share a little bit about highlights about our school. Um, the one that we're most proud of is our rise in student achievement over the years. Over the past five years, our math and ELA scores have more than tripled, so we're very proud of that. All of our eighth grade students take an advanced regents class, uh, advanced algebra course. So they move on to high school with credit in math. And starting next year, they'll be taking living environment as well. So if any of your children do come to Community Action School, when they graduate in the eighth grade, they'll move on to high school with high school credit in math and science. Um, for our students receiving academic supports, we have an ICT group on every grade level, a SETS group on every grade level, and we have all the um, related services that you might be familiar with, such as occupational therapy, speech, um, counseling, and so on and so forth. Uh, we offer a Saturday Academy for our program, so students uh, are able to come to school on Saturday starting in October, and that ends right after the state exams in April. So that's mostly test prep, math, um, math and ELA and some recreational activities as well on Saturdays. I'm sorry I'm speaking very quickly, but I want to get through everything. Um, our students also have Chromebooks, which are laptops. They don't get to take the Chromebooks home with them, but they start in sixth grade with, with laptops. They check them out in the morning and they return them at the end of the day. It's wonderful because teachers not only give out hard copies of all the work, but everything is on their computer. So if they have a computer and internet access at home, they're able to log on and all of their assignments are on there. If they're in the middle of a history assignment or a writing piece, they can continue right where they left off in class. A lot of times teachers assign homework um, wherever the students leave off, so it's right there. It's also a great way for teachers to communicate with families. Um, they do gradings, make comments for revisions right on the Chromebook, so that's wonderful. Um, we ut utilize New York City for many field trips. We do a lot of trips um, through sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. 
We go to the history museums, the art museums. Um, every goes to the Intrepid over the three years at the school. Um, every grade goes to the New Victory Theater to a Broadway performance. And um, the highlight of trips for our school is our three-day, two-night camping trip, and that's in the seventh grade. I'm going to turn it over to Jill and finish up if I have time left. Um, one thing that we're very proud of at Community Action School is that for being a small school, we're, we're able to offer a wide variety of enrichment programs. Um, we recently became a community school, which ensured that funding for five years, which is very exciting for us. Um, some of the clubs that we're able to offer after school are um, Tech Wizards, um, Chorus, Animation, Comic Book Design, Dance, and as well as other academic supports. We also have an athletic program. Uh, we offer boys and girls basketball, softball, cross country, track and field, soccer, and martial arts. Also under the community school's umbrella, uh, we're able to offer an in-house mental health clinic. So we have a clinic in the school that we share with the other two schools on campus as well. Uh, we also have a Smile New York program, which is dental services for our families, and an eye, eyeglass program, eyewear, eye, you know what I'm saying, eyeglass program as well. Um, as the assistant principal, I work closely with safety and discipline at our school. Uh, we're a community that believes students uh, learn best when they feel safe to take academic risks. So we work really proactively um, to build community and build an inclusive community. This year, we launched restorative circles. We were trained at the end of last year and over the summer. Um, and it's been going really well. Just one example of the, of the many ways that we work to, um, to build a positive community and positive relationships with our students and families. I'm also speaking very fast. Um, thanks for bearing with us. Um, many families ask if our students leave campus for lunch, and the answer is no, they stay with us all day. OK, so one of the things that I think is really special about our school is the staff that we have. They're really dedicated. They've been with us for years. And we have a very high retention rate. And honestly, most of our staff that leave, leave because they can't afford to live in New York City on a teaching salary, which is very sad, but it is a fact. Um, they work with students in the morning before school, after, after school, give up lunch breaks. Um, but the best way to learn about a school is to come visit. So if you are interested, there's information to sign up on your brochure. When you come to Community Action School on a tour, you're not going to sit in a room and listen to adults. You're actually going to go around, visit classrooms, uh, talk to students. There's also a website called insideschools.org that if you're not familiar with, it'll be a wonderful resource with you, uh, for you. Thank you all. I'm sorry your air conditioner is not working. Have a wonderful night. Thank you. My name is Delali Koda. I'm the assistant principal of Wadley Secondary School for the Performing and Visual Arts. That's why it's great for me to be here today. Um, we believe in educating the whole child. So we do have a strong arts program, and we believe in moving students forward academically. In terms of our arts program, students in the middle school start by having a taste of all of the different arts that we provide at the school. That includes ceramics, theater, and instrumental music. In addition to those, as they go through the school, they get to figure out which art they're interested in, and by high school, they can choose a discipline and major in that discipline. Academically, we move students forward so that they can have an accelerated program so by the time they get to high school, they have more choice to take the AP courses that they want. So by eighth grade, students are expected to take the algebra regions, the living environment regions, and the English regions. Again, that gives them the opportunity by high school to decide which direction they want to go in. Even though we're a small school, we individually program each student. Academic intervention services. All students in our school receive academic intervention services. So for the middle school, what that looks like is they are programmed to go to a course that advances all students. Those students that are having difficulty and those students who are already advanced for their level, for their grade level, they get to move continuously. So it's not that they're stuck at one place. One of the ways we do this is with a program called ALEX, A-L-E-K-S. That program is an adaptive program that moves with the level of the student. In addition to the academic intervention services, we have mindfulness. This generation of young people, they don't always log off. So we need them to know how to log off. What does that mean? They need to know how to breathe and de-stress. Our young people can be really stressed right now. They see a lot and they hear a lot. 
So we try to teach them of how to monitor their stress levels, how to deal with creating their own personal goals, and the right habits to be not only a strong student, but just to, to really move through this world and to not get overwhelmed. Our building is a historical landmark, and all of our rooms are outfitted for the courses that students have. So we have a black box theater for theater, we have a ceramics room for ceramics, and students really get to engage in the craft at a high level. But also, we are a community building. That means that at the end of the day, our school stays open. So we have an organization called Beacon Scan that comes into the building, and they provide additional time in school, whether it be academic services, or it can be also with the arts as well. So it's part of the community. On November 16th, on the back of the flyer that was just given out, on November 16th, we have something called a Taste of Wadley. A Taste of Wadley is from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. That provides an opportunity for you to see what we do in our school. Students will perform for you. You'll get to see their artwork. You'll get to talk to students and see what kind of community that we've built. We've built a very strong community with our students. In terms of class size, our class sizes are small, and we keep them that way on purpose. Our class size for middle school is between 24, 21 and 24 students. We do that so that we can have a personal interaction with all the students in our school. We also have really strong parent engagement in our school, and we always open our door to parents. We actually just built a parent welcome center so that parents can not only come in and support the school, but the parents can get support too. When it comes to everything from once you get to the high school process and, and managing that, and I mean, college might, I don't know, two, three million dollars by the time your children get into college. But we manage that. We work with everyone. And that's why we have our welcome center for parents. But we also really ask parents to be a part of what we do on a daily basis. Are there any questions? Yes. Yes, our building is a large building, has five floors. We take over the first and second floor. The second school in the building on this, the third and fourth floor is Frederick Douglass Academy too. I believe that principal is like two principals away, so you'll see him shortly. And we have a Harlem Success Academy on the fifth floor. In terms of, say that one more time. Principal, you know, yes. Like, there's things that are happening. Right. There's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. See, it's so hard to get this in five minutes, right? Um, so we have a new principal in the school that she was directly chosen by uh, former leadership inside of New York City. She's a proven principal who was once in uh, Bushwick and really moved that school to have a very high graduation rate, high attendance rate, and high passage on the AP courses. So they've brought that principal, who's been proven, over to Wadley. And Wadley now has the opportunity to not only have a strong principal, but also the funding to support all types of. Session sorry, 11. Please move on to the next session. To, provi you. to provide coaches for all, for all teachers and the new uh, tech programs that we've brought into the school to help students on their individual, for individual support. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Claire Lowenstein. I'm the principal of Manhattan School for Children, PS333. Some of you I know. Hello. Um, it's page 26 in the book, because I know that's something we should know. Uh, the, I guess the biggest thing that I would say about Manhattan School for Children that is different from all the other schools, that, most of the other schools that you met, is one, we're K to eight. So we have some kids who are coming up from fifth grade, and we have some new kids who come in from sixth grade. Um, we really believe in the K to eight model. We have a really strong reading buddies program and mentorship program. We have something in eighth grade called a legacy project, where kids work on stewardship, and part of it is working with the younger grades. So this way, they learn responsibility and commitment and um, giving back to their community. One of the other pieces that I would say that makes us very different is we are a progressive school, which means that 
we are a school that is child-centered, where we believe that the kids are at the center of their learning. So they are doing the heavy lifting of the learning. So teachers are facilitators, teachers are coaches, teachers are mentors. So when you see kids learning in a classroom, they are working in partnerships or trios or quads, and teachers are meeting with different kinds of kids to assess them to see where they are to make learning as individualized as possible. The other big piece is we really love families. So we're one of the, I think, only schools that invites families in. Families are allowed to drop off in the classroom. Families come in for learning celebrations. Families can volunteer. Um, we really believe that it takes faculty, families, and students to come together to make sure that kids are successful. The other big piece is that we're a fully inclusive school, which really means about access. So we work very hard to make sure that all kids have entry points, despite if they have a disability or they learn differently. Our work is to make sure that they have access. And I think that that's one of the things we do very, very well. Um, the other piece that I would say is just my kids are happy in 6, 7, 8. They smile. They skip. They're happy to come to school. They just love being there. Uh, we're small in 6, 7, 8. There's about 200 kids. And they're seen and they're heard. And even if they're loud, um, they're celebrated to be that way. And they love that about the school. Um, one of the things is they call us all by our first name. And they feel a connection to us. And because they feel that connection, they want to, they're happier. And middle school can be a very difficult time. And those connections can, help, can change a kid so quickly. We have a really strong advisory program. I'm an advisor. I take it very seriously. And that advisor stays with the kid through the three years to make sure that they can advocate and coach for them. Uh, we have very strong arts. We have music. We have dance. We have visual arts. We have drama. Um, one, of the, one of the special pieces about our school is we have a hydroponic greenhouse. So we do offer regents level classes to all our eighth grade. We offer living environment and algebra one. But really, the living environment is taught through inquiry. And it's also taught in our greenhouse. So we can have kids have that hands-on learning. We have something called a sustainability conference where kids are challenged to solve urban farming. And then they come together at Symphony Space, and they share their presentations of how they're solving issues around food, around water. And it's live streamed all over the world. Um, we are very in the forefront for terracycling, recycling, and just about sustainability. It's something that we pride ourselves in being very strong at. Uh, I think those are the big things about the school. Can I take questions? Yes. How many spots do you have on the general? Last year, we had eight spots. Eight. Mm -hmm. Because many of our fifth graders stay. So it depends on how many are staying or going. Other questions? <laughs> no other questions? When are you tour? Um, our tour is. I have to look at my phone. I think it's April, I mean, not April, October. Thank you. October 18th at 6 PM. All are welcome. You can sign up, but you can also um, just come. Other questions? So what we do is we are, we do look, thank you for bringing that up. I forgot that. So one of the things that we do is in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, every marking period, we have something called student work showcases, where kids take a piece of work from a marking period, and they present that piece of work to a round table of students. And they have a parent there and someone from administration. And the students in the round table um, evaluate each other through a rubric that they created. And they share a reflection. And one of the things that we ask if kids do come to interview with us is to bring a piece of work, because in the interview, we're going to ask them to speak to the piece of work. Oh, I know what I forgot. What I forgot is um, last year, we had most of our kids get into their first or second choice for high school. We only had three kids not match. 
and they were very happy to get into their choices. So we are at the forefront of getting kids into the best high schools. Okay. Thank you. Hello, my name is Asay Owusu-Frie. I'm the principal of Frederick Douglass Academy II, otherwise known as Page Six. So if you open <laughs> Page Six. Uh, our school is a small, and I mean small, six to 12 school uh, here on 114th Street. Uh, we are a community school as well as a STEM school. Um, we serve about 370 students. And as a community school, we also have three guidance counselors for our 370. We have a mental health clinic on site. We also have a satellite office from the Columbia School of Social Work. In addition, um, we provide uh, vision screenings for students and give them glasses through our partnership with Warby Parker, as well as um, dental screenings um, that we offer our students. Um, as a STEM school, scholars are able to take a sequence in engineering, in computer science, um, and in robotics at our school. All eighth graders, and I mean all eighth graders, take the algebra regents when they get to the eighth grade. In addition, they also take the living environment regents when they get to the eighth grade. Um, which enables them when they get to high school to be ready for, uh, uh, when they get to high school they start as like a sophomore. So they can take geometry, uh, which is typically a 10th grade, math or chemistry or um, physics, depending upon what school they go to. In addition, um, at our school we use a curriculum that integrates projects, so it's an interdisciplinary type of program. We don't have social studies as a standalone class. It's integrated with our English courses, and we call it humanities. Um, students, then, students, we are also a Lincoln Center Focus School, where teaching artists come in and work with our teachers to integrate their discipline, and then students then go to either see that performance or that work of art. Um, in our school, we do a lot of trips. A lot of trips, students go on a trip at least once a month. Um, so for example, the eighth graders are seeing Hamilton on the 24th. Um, we also are uh, just big on having a culture of talk. So all our scholars uh, sit, have these, these circles, community circles that they experience um, on a day-to-day -day basis where they talk about issues related to adolescence and to career development and to getting ready for college and for high school. Uh, what, what makes us unique is because it was 6 to 12 and we offer like seven AP classes in our high school and physics and chemistry and these other rigorous subjects that allows us to know uh, really closely what students need to be successful as they make that transition from 8th grade um, into ninth grade and from 5th grade to 6th grade. We offer a summer program where students come in for three weeks in July um, with their 6th grade, uh, the new 6th grade cohort and they do trips together, take classes together, learn how to do a combination lock, right? Walk down the hallway, because you know, you're going from being in one classroom to now that you have to like, transition from classes. So we're big on making sure we're supportive. Class sizes are under 22 students in a class. Um, it's a very expensive program, but we believe it's very important to provide a very personalized environment. I've been the principal at FDA2 since 2010, and I've been a principal since 2008. What other questions? What did I? Ah, yes. If you want to see us, so at the top of page seven are dates for open houses. Um, there's also an additional date on your flyer. If you want to see us live and how we make the magic happen, you can contact Mr. Kareem Wright. His information is there, and we can set up an appointment for you to come in. If you really want to see what a school's about, come see lunch, right? And then you get to see <laughs> how it really gets down. All right. Questions. Stay on campus for lunch? Yes. We are a closed campus. Unless you're in high school. If you're in high school and you are, um, you've earned these special rewards, you get uh, what we call a lunch in the community card, and you get to go out for lunch. But for middle school, they're on campus. Sports, and we ask about sports. We have soccer, basketball, flag football. Yes. Hey, what's the separation factor for sixth grade versus the ninth and twelfth? Oh, so they're very large buildings. So the sixth grade, the middle school has their own special wing. They have their own bathrooms, um, on, um, and then they are escorted for if they have to leave the floor at any point because the building's so large, they are always escorted. Uh, in addition, the impact of all this work is in 2017, we were the number one middle school for 
achieve, um, for math growth in New York City. Right? So what many schools will do is they'll screen out students that they have to teach. But at our school, what we do is we take anybody who comes in. And so our fours did better than other fours. Our threes did better than other threes. Um, we were the number one school for impact in middle school mathematics. Yes. How many of your middle schoolers stay for the high school? Good question. So over 50% of our middle school students stay for our high school. Um, and, but they get into pretty selective schools when they, uh, it all depends what they choose, but they get into several schools. Like we had, we sent a whole course of students to Pace High School, to fashion industries, to art and design. It all depends upon what the students want. But we would work with Mr. Wright in eighth grade to decide what would be best for you. And we also have some students who go on to prep schools. We have a, a very close partnership with an organization called Street Squash, um, which is an after school program. And that's right here in Harlem. Sorry. All right, thank you. I am Marlon Lowe, principal of the Mahal 2 Middle School, um, the most diverse learning community in District 3, maybe New York City. And why I'm particularly proud of that is that we've experienced great success the past 10 to 15 years um, without tracking. In other words, there is no special program, there is no GMT program, there is no honors program in my school. All scholars sit side by side. The only thing we control for is gender to make sure we have a nice balance of boys and girls. Other than that, all scholars are expected to succeed together. And with that model, we've been able to achieve great success, whereas the overwhelming majority of my Holtulians can expect to graduate with Common Core Algebra Regents credit and Living Environments Biology credit based on our three-year accelerated curriculum. So um, in a lot of ways, we're becoming the model for diversity because we've believed in it all along, and we've proven that it can work in District 3, and we're finally getting notice for it, and it's something I'm very proud of. We don't just focus on academics, however. We are also big believers in social-emotional support, specifically believing that in the middle school years, it doesn't matter how great of a reader you are, if you're not getting that social-emotional support, everything may come crashing down if you don't get the correct support in place right away. So my whole two offers two full-time guidance counselors to provide that support to scholars. Additionally, rather than have traditional homeroom, um, your scholars meet with advisors who they start the day by usually sitting in maybe a circle or a small group and can share out and express based on a discussion prompt that we may have, right? Um, again, the idea of giving scholars the forum to express so that they get all that they need and they can be successful. One of my counselors is also an eighth grade high school specialist who will make sure that you get the support you need to navigate what can be sometimes a Byzantine high school process, right? To make sure that you get the support and you get the great placements you, you, you want. This came up, where do my whole Tulians go? We, I'm very proud of where we sent. Uh, it worked out where that question was asked in the last room. One of my Stuyvesant parents was there. I was like, well, we send them to Stuyvesant. Um, <laughs> but we also have, um, we do Beacon. Uh, I sent a bunch of kids to be Beacon this past year. Uh, 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 Frank McCourt, the NYC iSchool. Um, Millennium has been one. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, though they don't take um, general ed kids from District 3, they have taken a lot of my special education students who experienced a lot of success. So we really do send to a lot of different schools and a lot of wonderful schools, and we're a transparent community, so we share that with you. Speaking of transparency, I just want to touch on that for a little bit. One of the first things parents notice about my school is that when they walk in, they say, this school is very warm. I find it to be a very warm school. I feel very welcomed. We don't screen out at the security desk. You don't have to wait for somebody to get clearance to come upstairs. We welcome all into our community. You're more than welcome to check out teaching and learning. My only request is that you don't disrupt instruction. So long as you're not disrupting the teaching and classes, you're more than welcome to go out because I'm a big believer in creating a school community environment that's open to all members of the community. And as parents, you would be welcome in as members of the community. Um, we are uh, big believers in a rich after school program and opportunities. So my whole two offers the my whole two after school academy. This is teacher driven and this includes my competitive sports programs. You're looking at uh, uh, boys and girls basketball, boys and girls soccer, uh, baseball, which my whole two is the only school I'm aware of in Manhattan with a fully functional batting cages. In its, uh, in its gym that scholars can access. My exceptional baseball players actually have an opportunity to earn a scholarship to the NYC Bluebirds, where they can do um, a competitive baseball team that travels. Um, we also have um, Model UN. We have instrumental lessons with the Manhattan School of Music. We have uh, a school musical that we put on every year. A lot of great opportunities that you could take advantage of, um, so long as you stay connected and stay part of uh, the process. We also have Boys and Girls Harbor 
who offers a five-day program at our school from 240 to 545 every day for my working families who might need coverage for their scholars. And the good news is the programs work interchangeably. So let's say you have a young man or young woman who finishes basketball practice at 430. They can go to Boys and Girls Harbor till 545 to wait for you to get out of work. And you'll know that they're somewhere safe and secure where they're working productively waiting for you. Right? Um, so the school is a big believers in enabling you and making your life as easy as possible because we know they're working people. We live in a very difficult city sometimes, so we try to make it as easy for you as possible. Um, I challenge you to find another school in New York City where the principal is writing three newsletters every weekend to make sure the community is informed. You're talking to one right now. Um, but I said three for a reason. Parents get one, teachers get one, but most importantly, students get one. And the point, the reason why we do that is we want the students. I'm gonna keep going. We got the students, and what the students can do um, when they have information, rather than you saying, this is due Wednesday, where is it? They should be coming to you with, this is due Wednesday, where is it, right? Um, changing the variable so that they own more of their learning. Please look up my school. We have an open house October 13th and October 3rd. Um, uh, you're more than welcome. You don't have to pre-register, though, if you want to go to the website and let us know who you are, that would be helpful. But please come learn more. I will take any quick questions, even though I'm not allowed to. How many people? Uh, about 125. Uh, open, nobody, no, unclaimed. Uh, we, we don't have any, we're, we're six to eight. And there's not, we're 165? No, 165 does not, um, we're completely distinct programs. They have to go through the process like any other school. You're just on, the, you're just, you're on one floor. So we're actually on two now, um, so we got expanded. We're on four and five, um, uh, actually due to our success. And the tour, um, for well, when you come to the open house, we share how do you access the tour. About 28, 29. Okay. And yeah, please come to the open house. And then I challenge you for a little thing. If you want to do something fun in the meantime, Google CNN Mott Hall 2. You'll see my scholars in their school newspaper covering the election. So please check that out. A nice little, nice little article, all right? Take care, folks. Thank you very much. My name is Carlin Washington. I am the proud principal of West Prep Academy. We are uh, located on page one of your book. And so if you want to flip to that. And that is on purpose because this beautiful young lady, Ms. Sadali Costa, is my magnet art specialist, and she made this book for you. So she put us first on, on purpose. Like, I don't want to play about that. Like, we are so on purpose for doing that. Uh, the reason why we have switched this up, and I just want to just talk to you for just a second, is that, you know, uh, District 3 is going through this diversity plan. We're trying to diversify the schools a little bit. If you have come to any other principal's forum before this, you notice that we would sit on a stage and people would tend to come to listen to only three or four people. And so they don't really pay attention to the other things that are happening in the school. But the dirty secret is that you can get a great education at all District 3 middle schools. I have students who leave my school and they go to Beacon. I have students who leave my school who go to Brooklyn Tech. We do a lot with arts and technology and media. And so I have a lot of kids who get into the performing arts schools like professional performance arts. I got a st uh, student into Frank Sinatra last year for the first time. And so you don't just have to go to certain schools in order to get Regents credits or to get your child into one of these specialized high schools. And so I appreciate you all participating in this new experiment that we put together uh, today. Test scores are important to families and we recognize that. And you know, even though they have been embargoed, I'm gonna talk about them anyway, just because that's what you wanna hear. Uh, when I took over the school five years ago, um, particularly in ELA, we, our scores were dismal and I won't sugarcoat that, but they don't tell the full picture of what we're doing. 11% on grade level. But last year's class, my eighth grade cohort left about 65 and up on grade level in ELA. So that means we're not sitting there babysitting kids and we're not throwing out worksheets at them. We're actually providing strategic and targeted instruction, whether your child is a level one or a level four. 80 to 90 percent of our students show growth every year. And so the level three and four students that we take in, we make them even stronger. And so we've taken kids who were level 3.1 in ELA and turned them into a 4.2. And those are the test scores that schools like Beacon are looking for because they have to distinguish your child from the 6,000 other children that are applying. And so if everybody's just a level three, then that's not going to cut it. If they entered in one school, they sat in a classroom with all level threes, and they left out of a level three. That's not going to work for them. And so you want to find a school that is going to cater to your child's individual needs. And again, that happens at more than just four schools in a district. When I took over, we had no Regents classes. We offer three now. We offer living environment, we offer algebra, and we offer Spanish as well. 
Last year, a third of my students took those exams. I had 22 students in algebra, 17 passed. I had 22 taking the living environment, 21 passed, all but one student. And so this year, I have all of my eighth graders uh, taking living environment because why not get some high school credit before you go to high school? That's one less class that you have to take when you enter into high school. I had uh, nine students pass the Spanish uh, second language proficiency exam. And so I had nine students who left me with four credits because you got two credits for that Spanish class. And not too many schools can offer your child four high school credits in middle school. <clears throat> we also offer free specialized high school prep. And I am the only middle school that offers the specialized high school exam during the school day at school. So that means they don't have to schlep down to Stuyvesant on a Saturday or Sunday to take the specialized high school exam. They can take it during the day. And we're looking for more students to be enrolled into the specialized high schools because we've been prepping them twice a week uh, for the past two years to get ready for that exam. And so again, that is free for your child if they attend West Prep Academy. And that concludes session 15. We are now going to our sixth That wasn't five minutes, I don't believe it. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Ms. Costa is our magnet and art specialist. We focus a lot on art and technology, so I'm just going to let her speak very quickly about the elective programs that we offer at our school. So we offer uh, full marching bands with a brass section, percussion section, and a dance section. We offer visual arts to every student, 6th, 7th, and 8th, technology, and physical education. So they are enrolled in those classes throughout 6th, 7th, and 8th grade every year. We also have a studio course on Fridays where the students get to pick their own elective, and it meets once a week. And those elective courses all culminate in performances. And the, the reason behind this is to prepare them for those schools that may require them to have auditions, also to kind of nurture their talents and be able to get them to develop their skills in either performing arts, singing, acting, dancing, or instrumental music. So we do have a very robust program, and it's very tailored to nurture every child's you know, special talents that they have. Um, everybody gets physical education, yeah. everybody gets a marching band, and everybody gets a medium technology class. When they graduate, they can play more than one musical instrument um, in the band. Uh, we're a small school with 200 students. Our class sizes are from 16 to 24 in the sixth grade. Um, we will see you at the middle school fair, which is October 11. Yes. Um, we'll bring our alumni, we'll bring current students, current parents. So you'll be able to meet them, ask them questions, and if you attend an evening open house, we will invite you back for a daytime tour. And our website should be in the book, but it's www.ms421.org. If you would like to sign up for a tour, Ms. Costa will respond to you. Questions. Questions. Great question. So our current park, um, they started construction this summer. They've slated it to be 12 to, to 18 months, so about a year and a half. It will be the gold standard for inclusive playgrounds. It's going to be one of the most expensive playgrounds ever made. Six million dollars. Six million dollars. And um, But when it is done, it's going to be the best playground in all of Manhattan. So closed now but it's going to be worth the wait and they are moving very quickly on it so thank you so much get home safely stay dry guys thank you hi everybody i'm henry zemek i'm principal of the computer school uh thanks for coming tonight um i've been at the computer school now for 27 years last 14 as principal i actually did my student teaching uh, my first year in that building, so you know it's been pretty much my entire uh, life in, in education, um, and uh, you know I I love the school. Um, really happy that it worked out that I've been able to spend so much time there. Uh, what is it that's most important to me as a as a principal? Um, it's that your kids love school, that each individual kid loves school. They leave school feeling they had a great school day, that they wake up in the morning excited about going back to school. Do we accomplish that all the time? No. Uh, middle school kids are complex. There's a lot going on with them, but that's what we aim for. Um, and uh, every year, we try to enhance what we do so that more kids feel that way about the middle school experience. We don't do that at the, at the expense of academic rigor. Um, we want kids to be challenged. Um, we call ourselves an accelerated uh, um, 
academic environment, meaning that all students will be doing work above grade level, uh, particularly by the time they get to the eighth grade. And that is irrelevant of the test scores that they come in with. We accelerate for all students, and we have. We've never had honors classes or gifted classes or anything like that. We've always had heterogeneous classes across the curricular, uh, curricular spectrum, with the exception of math in the eighth grade. That is now um, tracked. Uh, so we have uh, about two-thirds of the kids take Regents Algebra, and the other third of the students take the standard eighth grade uh, math curriculum. Um, so what, how do we do that? How have we been able to do that with this wide range of learners in a classroom? Well, one is it starts with believing in the kids um, and differentiating for them and making the curriculum so that it's accessible to everybody and making it kid friendly. Um, you know, if you teach only one way, it's not going to be something that's accessible to all kids. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of uh, group work um, where kids are synergizing with each other. We do um, a lot of open ended questioning, big questions, higher order thinking uh, questions. And uh, kids have to debate, they have to defend, they have to synthesize, and, and um, they also have to uh, embody. There's a lot of role play that we do in classes. We um, also have kids leaving the school environment um, to go out into the city to, uh, for all of its cultural institutions um, and make that uh, something that enhances what they're learning in the classroom. Um, and not necessarily in the traditional ways. Uh, for example, like we do a world religions unit um, with our eighth graders as part of our global studies curriculum. That's normally taught in high school. And, um, when uh, during that unit, um, students actually visit a mosque, a Buddhist temple, a synagogue, a, a church, and they compare and they contrast and they, they read uh, some uh, excerpts. And um, thank you. This concludes the final presentation of our final middle school. And they, they also talk we'll with each other about their own experiences. Um, and it, it validates, it educates. And it, it brings things to life. And, and they go on from the computer school looking for that liberal arts experience that we offer. Many of our kids wind up making the decision to go to liberal arts schools when they go to college because they like that smallness and how it stimulated a different kind of learning for them. They would have gotten a more institutional setting. Questions? So we accept uh, enough to put 33 kids in, in each homeroom, which is the maximum allowable size, but they're rarely in that configuration once they leave homeroom. They're only there for like 20 minutes a day. The rest of the day, sixth and seventh graders are in groups of uh, 26 or 27 students. So you accept about? Uh, no, we, accept, we, we offer seats to somewhere getting approaching 150 to allow for some attrition. At the end of the day, we have four classes times 33 is 132 uh, seats that we're trying to fill. If we have more attrition, then we'll offer some seats in the appeals round. And we do give some preference to siblings. Okay? Yes? Well, we used to interview students, um, but the, uh, now with blind admissions, instead of dealing with a pool of 250 to 300 applicants, we're dealing with 1,200 applicants. We don't have the capacities to interview them. So we took previous year's rubrics and you know, uh, deleted information about rankings and things like that and tried to come up with a method that would yield roughly the same uh, outcomes. And so we feel pretty confident that the, the methodology we're going to use is going to result in the similar outcomes. No, not unless a student doesn't have information in the spreadsheet and we need to find out more about them. Whenever there's something missing, test scores, for example, some people opt out, kids get sick, whatever, come in from out of state, um, we want to level the playing field and get something that's analogous to what we're missing. Okay? Thank you, everybody.